Hey guys, it's Cece, and today I am here to recommend to you some LGBTQIA plus books. This is a part three to my series of videos where I exclusively talk about LGBTQIA plus books. I will leave the first two linked down in the description below. If you haven't checked those out already, you should. I talk about some fantastic books in those videos, so I hope you are ready. I'm going to talk about all different kinds of queer books, queer characters. It's it's all right here. It's all happening. I know you probably all have your Pride TBRs picked out already, but you should be reading queer books year-round. So really, I'm just making sure that your TBR list is lengthy and gay as hell. Let's get started. First up, I want to talk about the comic Goldie Vance by Hope Larson and Brittany Williams. I read volume one last year, and I think that you should also be reading it, this fabulous series. This is a retro fun mystery comic series about a biracial queer girl which is great. So this is about a girl named Goldie. Her father works at this big, fabulous hotel, and Goldie works there too, but she is definitely most interested in the detective position. She's constantly solving mysteries, solving problems at the hotel, and then one day she gets roped into a mystery of her own. She also has a crush on this, like, fabulous, artsy, musical greaser girl who I love. If you loved Nancy Drew growing up, if you really like the vibe of the Lumberjanes comics, I think that this fits into both of those really nicely. It's done by the same publishers that publish Lumberjanes. So you get that vibe, that really colorful, cheery vibe. Honestly, when I went into this comic, I didn't know it was queer. I was just reading it because I love a good mystery and I love a good retro mystery, but this has everything that you could want and more. So I recommend it. Next, I want to talk about Knit One Girl 2 by Shira Glassman, which is an absolutely fantastic novella about ladies falling in love. This is about a woman who knits and who is working on a particular project, meets an artist who inspires her, and they start to work on something together while also falling for each other. It's fantastic. I get a lot of people asking me, and I think a lot of people asking the internet in general, for really happy, upbeat female-female romances that just feel light and breezy, and that is definitely, definitely what this is. Plus, this is a novella, which means it's incredibly quick to get through. It is the perfect addition to your Pride TBR so it should be on there. Moving on, I want to talk about Spellbook of the Lost and Found by Moira Fowley Doyle. This is a book that I think that gets passed around a little bit, but we don't talk as much about the fact that there is a ton of queer rep. This book has three points of view. They are all girls, and two of those girls are queer. So there is a bi girl narrator as well as a lesbian narrator. Within the book itself, there's also another bi character, and there is both a female-female romance as well as a male-female romance for the various people. One of the bi girls is deaf in one ear and one of them is biracial, so there is also that rep as well. This is a super mysterious mystery set in a small Irish town and it begins one night at a party. All of the teenagers in town attend and when everyone wakes up the next morning, everyone finds something missing. Sometimes they are innocuous things like a hair clip or a bag, but then things start turning up found, and they're much more sinister. This is a really fantastic book with an ensemble cast. It's about witchcraft and creepiness and finding connections. It's super interesting. If you like The Raven Cycle, I don't want to like blankly recommend it because it's like the raven cycle but it has a little bit of that vibe which is probably why i loved it as much as i did so if you're looking for magical and eerie but also queer content then Spellbook is out there waiting for you. Next, I want to talk about The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. It is possible you have heard this book passed around a little bit. It has been going through quite the phase on booktube with good reason. It's absolutely incredible. So I know that this title gives off the vibe that it is incredibly heterosexual, but it's actually one of the more queer books I've ever read. This is about an aging Hollywood star named Evelyn Hugo who has been historically very tight-lipped about her past. And then one day she reaches out to a particularly unknown author and asks that author to write her life story. Evelyn is bisexual and Cuban, and she is my Slytherin goddess, honestly. But this is about Evelyn and the woman writing her story, Monique, and how their lives intertwine, the specific life that Evelyn Hugo led, the complex relationships between women, good and bad. It's one of those 
books that stuck with me for months and months after reading it. It is honestly just incredible. It's spread over so much time. There's so much history and love and heartbreak. You will cry, but you will love it. So definitely give Evelyn Hugo a shot. Okay, let's talk about Noteworthy by Riley Redgate. This is a book about Jordan. She is a Chinese American and comes from a particularly disadvantaged family. And she's attending a prestigious performing arts school on a scholarship. She's trying desperately to prove to her parents that this is a place where she belongs. She wants to get those parts, but her alto voice is not really getting the musical theater parts that she wants. So in an act of desperation, Jordan decides to cross-dress to disguise herself as a boy and audition for the incredibly popular men's a cappella choir on campus. Now I am not normally one for stories about cross-dressing, but I think that this one is done particularly well and brings a real nuance to gender discussion that a lot of other cross-dressing books don't have. Plus, Jordan is bisexual and part of her journey on this entire book of self-discovery, of figuring out what she wants, is figuring out that she's bi. There are other queer side characters. This has a pretty large cast of people of color as well as side characters and has one of the most authentic and lovable voices in a YA contemporary that I've ever read. I just fell in love with her from page one and you can't help but follow her and love her every step of the way as well. Now, would this be a recommendations video with Cece if I didn't talk about an Austin Chance novella? The correct answer is no, it would not be. So I wanna talk about Caroline's Heart, which is about trans people falling in love. More than that, this is a magical Western, which is also a fantastic concept. It follows a young cowboy who is just trying to stay under the radar, and it also follows a witch who lost her true love and has been trying to resurrect her. But when the cowboy injures himself, the witch has to decide whether or not it is worth it to give up the chance at resurrecting her true love in order to save a man she doesn't know. Both of the main characters of this novella are trans and are definitely falling for each other. Austin Chant creates gorgeous just worlds, characters I care about, romances I'm invested in. I've previously talked about his novella Peter Darling in one of these videos. You should also definitely read Coffee Boy. I've, I've talked about Coffee Boy as well. He writes beautiful novellas about trans people finding love and it's, it's fantastic. But right now I'm recommending Caroline's Heart because it was great. It was released last October and I think it deserves so much more hype. So. Now let's talk about Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. This follows a girl named Frances who is bisexual and biracial and for her entire life, her identity has been defined by her ability to do well at school. She's nearing this time where she is preparing for university. It's becoming increasingly more stressful and she spends all of her free time listening to her favorite podcast, Universe City. So when the creator and mysterious host of Universe City reaches out to Frances and asks her to do official art for the podcast, Frances cannot believe it, but she is really excited to jump into a new project. Simultaneously, she is also slowly becoming best friends with the boy across the street, Aled. So this is a book with a bisexual main character and it's basically about bros for life, like her and Aled are, are true bros for life, that's it. It's wonderful. It's very, very good. This also has on-page gay rep, on-page demisexual rep. It's also an incredible look at anxiety and depression and the pressures of university and facing down that future that feels inevitable. It's excellent and I can't recommend it enough. Plus, it is deeply nerdy, so you have to know that going in as well. I also have to talk about The Summer of Jordi Perez and the Best Burger in Los Angeles by Amy Spaulding because you know how I was talking earlier about really like light, breezy, carefree, female-female romances? That's what this is. This is about a girl named Abby who spends most of her time trying to write and publicize her plus size fashion blog. And then she gets the chance to be an intern at her favorite boutique in town, which is great, except that the boutique has hired two interns this summer instead of one, which means that her and the other intern are going to be competing for the permanent position in the fall, which only really becomes an issue when Abby meets Jordy, the other intern, and absolutely starts to fall for her competition. There's also a whole other side plot to this about driving around, trying to find the best tasting burger in Los Angeles. It's a really fun subplot, but it's not really central to the story and the romance of Abby and Jordy, which is everything. It's light, it's summery, it's breezy. There is, of course, miscommunication and drama, but 
It's all this wonderful rom-com style that I have loved so much for so many different types of couples, and I was really excited to see it for a lady couple. So be sure to check it out and also get hype because the spine of the hardcover is a rainbow and that's everything to me. Second to last, I want to talk about Let's Talk About Love by Claire Kahn, which is an own voices book with a black biromantic ace protagonist. So this book is about Alice and it begins with her being dumped by her girlfriend because Alice is asexual. She's just finished her freshman year at college and she determines that she is absolutely done with romance. She's going to spend the summer with her friends, binging TV and working at the library. But the new employee at the library, Takumi, turns out to be super cute and super compatible and Alice finds herself falling for him despite the fact that that's definitely not what she wanted this summer to be about. This book does an incredible job with the bisexual rep, with the ace rep, it's also great at dealing with friends and kind of as you grow up what happens when you maybe grow apart. It's about dealing with unsupportive parents, it's also got a character who's regularly going to therapy, so there's a lot of good. I really really loved this book and I wish that I could have given it to myself a few years ago. This and Radio Silence are both books that I feel like I could have really used when I was younger and so I can't help but recommend them because I want other people to get the chance to see that rep as well. And finally, I wanna talk about Wild Beauty by Anne-Marie McLemore because I simply must. Wild Beauty is about a family of women who live in the gardens of La Pradera. They are these lush gardens that people from around the world come to visit. The women live in the gardens, they tend to the gardens, and they live with a curse. That should any of them fall too deeply in love, the object of their affection will disappear. Here. And then one day, a boy with no memory of who he is turns up in the gardens. Almost every single character in this book is a queer Latinx woman, so you should know that because that is, that's everybody. There are a couple of other characters who do not fit in those parameters, but like, that's it for the most part. This is a wonderful, wonderful piece of magical realism about family and love and the traumas of colonialism that I, I recommend all the time because it just struck me so deeply and that I think is so meaningful. So I, I don't know what to do but recommend it at every chance I get. Okay guys, that is it. Those are all of the books that I want to recommend to you today in this video. What did you think of my recommendations? Have you read any of these books? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you are having a fantastic pride and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye.